Welcome to my personal speech. <laughs> um, today our topic is Nagaho sand painting. Um, before my formal introduction to our topic, let's enjoy some sand paintings first. Next. <clears throat> um, these, these following sand paintings were done by a famous sand painter in China. Next. <clears throat> um, I really love this dolphin. Which is cute, and the motion of the dolphin is really vivid. So that's one reason I like sand painting. Next, um, this one is my favorite one, and I really like the atmosphere of the sand painting. Next, um, and then let's enjoy another version of the sand painting. Next, um, before my before I say something, I want to ask you guys, what's your Impression of this sand painting. Anyone want to ask me? Oh, that's <laughs> primitive. Mm -hmm. Primitive. Um, to me, <laughs> the, <laughs> the overall feeling of this sand painting is weird. Uh, if you notice, uh, it's a human actually, and its head is a rectangular shape, and it has a super long body and then very, very short, tiny legs. I don't know why. Next. <laughs> uh, this one is uh, even more weird. Uh, we notice it's a human as well, and you see his or her body. It's super long, and if you uh, look at it closely, you will see this shape in this same painting. See, and a, black, uh, a white one. Well, as you can guess, these are net holes and paintings. Next. <clears throat> so, this introduced to my research, research question how is net holes and painting differentiate from traditional sand painting? Uh, the reason I picked this topic as my research question was I'm a person who is interested in uh, sand paintings. Um, so, I want to do research. Question related to sand paintings, and I went to my favorite website Baidu and asked her <laughs> what topic can I use, and she suggested me to use natural sand painting. So I said, okay, let's do it. <laughs> and next. Uh, next, to understand my research paper, let's go and see our my thesis statement first. Uh, natural sand paintings can be explored through its uh, four elements, which are origin, process, purpose, and ritual uses. Um, but I'm not gonna discuss how the Nepal sand paintings are made and what's about Nepal sand paintings now. If you are interested, come to me and I will show you my research paper. Um, next. Okay, now it's my sample paragraph. How I use knowledge I learned in my research paper. Next. Um, it's a little bit long. Uh, the first sentence, uh, I use what our professor taught us, the transition sentence, uh, to make a smooth transition from the previous paragraph to this paragraph. Use my own words. And in the end, oh, it's not, I don't know, it cannot show the end. Go back. Uh, in the end, I also use my own words to have a conclusion of this whole body paragraph. And if you notice, I used red marks to highlight two words. The first one is Perzo 11. This is the last name of the author, and the 11 is the page number of the reference I used. And this one does not have a page number after it. That's the reason, because it's an online article, and it does not have a page. So I don't need to put a page number. Next. Um, from since then, I really think you have a question of what is Nepal? Next, Next. Uh, the word Nepal uh, indicates actually they are Native American, which live in southwestern of the United States. They are a group of people, uh, Native Americans. Next, and this word is pronounced Lika, but. I'm not sure if it's correct or not, because I try to find its pronunciation in many ways, but there's only one way 
two two. So I'm not sure if it's right, correct, or wrong. And then it means a network word means place where the gods come and go. And this word is used uh, to describe the network sand painting. So it, you can see the importance of the network sand painting in the uh, network sand movement. Next, uh, this word is called ritual. It means a religious ceremony consisting of a series of actions performed according to a prescribed order. Um, from these three words, uh, it's easy to see that Nepal sand painting is not mainly um, made for aesthetic purposes, but for some racial uses related to their uh, religious belief. Next. And as you all know, nothing is too easy to do especially our important research paper. So the main challenge I faced is uh, time management. We have we've already have lecture about it. And the, ch the difficulty I faced was, next, uh, homework. Yes. <laughs> uh, as you all know, we all love LCD class. We all love color A. We all are really willing to spend eight hours every week on those homework. And my solution to this is to next, uh, to make a plan, have a schedule, and do a little every day. Here, do a little every day is really important if you want to have a good research paper. Because if you do the research paper the night before the due, I'm pretty sure you will not really receive a good result. And so I mainly divided my research paper task every day. And next challenge I face is um, MLA. Um, when I first heard the word, next, there were <laughs> thousands of question marks in my mind. And then I thought of, wait, I heard this word before, like three or four years ago. <laughs> and but I totally forgot what it's about. And next, so I used my own personal <laughs> solution. Firstly, I went back to my favorite website, Baidu.com again. And unfortunately, this time she doesn't know. And then I thought, oh, MLA form is a Western stuff. So I went to a Western website, uh, Google, <laughs> and Google told me go Wikipedia. <laughs> but Later then, our teacher told us that Wikipedia are not really reliable for a research paper. So I had to think of a new way. And I asked my friends, uh, junior and senior friends, if, asked them if they know what's MLA. And they told me, go to Pudo. So I find my answer in Pudo. That was the reason why I did a relatively good job in the MLA format. Uh, next, and then it's my question time. Um, as an international student, we all have some trouble of the grammar and vocabulary. We are not sure whether the tense, verb tense, is really appropriate to use in a sentence. And I know Press Institute is so kind that it has a writing center, but the writing center is only available one time, once a week. No. Yeah. No. At least I went there and they told me you can only come here once a week. So, oh, no. <laughs> and like one hour. Uh, in one hour? Really? Yeah. Okay. And so, my question is anyone, you know, any website can help me if I want to check my grammar and vocabulary? You can buy a book from China Bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> that may yeah. took, took, took too long, I think. Like, I want some website can automatically check it for me. <laughs> I don't really care if it's free or not. <laughs> no. Ask professor. <laughs> <laughs> there is one you have to pay for. I used it a while ago. I have to check the exact name. Uh, I would have to do some research. <laughs> I can get back to you, though. All right. Anyone know any website? No. And that's the end. Thank you.